I'm worried this is too blue. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, there's a lot of white right there. Hey everyone, I'm Chloe and I've recently become obsessed with tie-dye. I don't think I'm the only person to become obsessed because I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it on my Instagram, on clothing websites, even on celebrities. Kylie Jenner was wearing a extremely expensive matching tie-dye set. But the good news is that you can tie-dye stuff yourself and it doesn't seem that hard. I say that now because I haven't tried it yet. So the cool thing that everyone sees me wearing right now is loungewear because obviously no one's really going anywhere. So I thought, yes, let me give this a go myself and see if I can recreate a professional looking matching tie-dye loungewear set. So obviously you need white clothes to tie-dye on because it will show up the best. I had an issue trying to find white clothes during this quarantine because delivery is really, really slow at the moment, understandably. And unfortunately there weren't a lot of items I could get quick enough. So you need 100% cotton for it to really work properly, like natural fibers. And I could not find a hoodie that was 100% natural cotton or a crop top. My hoodie is a 93 or 95% and so is my crop top. So there is a chance that the tie dye isn't gonna go on properly. Ugh. So this is the outfit on. I really love these pants, they're so cute. They're really high-waisted. Just a little tank, crop top. Don't love the jacket, but there wasn't really much I could do about it. I wish it was cropped or just not as thin or just more oversized. It's kind of just in the middle. But yeah, this is what we're working with. So I am gonna be using this One Step Tie-Dye Kit by Tulip. I deliberately chose these colors because they're a little less rainbow and I want something a little more subtle. This kit includes most things you need to tie-dye with, whereas if you buy dye on its own, you then obviously have to find rubber bands and gloves and these bottles, but this all comes in the kit, which is really nice. If you don't wanna use a kit and you want separate dye, there's a brand called RIT, which is apparently really good, and it comes in more sort of cute colors, to be honest. But I wanted the kit because I am a beginner and I just want to be told what to do. This is everything you need to tie dye, apart from the items you're tie dyeing. I have a white towel to test what the color of the dye is gonna look like on it before I put it on the clothes. Elastic bands, your dye, and your bottles to put water and dye in. I've decided I want these three colors because these three are the colors I like together. <laughs> Some gloves. And then you need plastic bags for however many items you're dyeing because you put them in there separately afterwards. So some websites and some videos say to actually wash the clothes first and then others say just to get it wet because you're going to put the dye on wet. I'm just going to get this wet. So once your fabric is nice and wet you want to lay it on a tarp of some description so that obviously your floor doesn't get all messed up. Yes I am sitting on my kitchen floor. I live in a studio apartment. So the next thing you're going to want to do is decide what technique you want. I personally am going to go for a crumpled technique which is one of the easiest to do but I like the effect that it gives it's more of like a marbled all over effect for the hoodie and for the pants I'm going to do marbled and then maybe just to show you guys a different technique I'll do the crop top in a swirl which is hopefully not going to look crazy because I do want this to be a matching set so we'll see so I ended up putting a trash bag underneath the hoodie because to be honest the paint from the top here ended up on some of the hoodie so basically you're just gathering the fabric and try and do it uniformly so that you're not getting big clumps and small clumps. Mainly from the middle is what people were saying and like come through like this. I undid the zipper because it doesn't feel very flexible and I feel like it'll be less flexible with it done up. But this is my first time guys so I could be very wrong. Okay so now that's crinkled you want to put the elastic bands around it. Let's see how this goes. I kind of don't know how to keep it all in one lump. Like, do I put one massive, this band isn't even big enough. I guess maybe, hmm. Yep, it all looks pretty crinkly. Okay, onto the pants. You take the end and you just crinkle. I'm actually gonna just put a band in right now just so it doesn't go out of shape while I do the rest. Oh, you can make a little ball with it. That's smart. Okay, I think that's good. So I'm gonna use the colors lavender, purple, and turquoise. These already have the powder in them, but I want it to be a little more pastel, so I actually might tip a little bit of the powder out because you're gonna fill this up with water and I can't really dilute it unless I tip the powder out. So I tipped out a little bit of dye from each. Now we fill it up. 
Woo. Oh my God, that is very deep. And then you shake it for one minute each die. Well, literally just shaking them did this to me. Put the glove on, Chloe. So I'm gonna test what this looks like on this white towel. This one's the lavender. That is very, very dark. Although it is spread out quite nicely. Purple. Ooh, God, that's deep. I guess the purple and the lavender do need to look different. So I'll probably leave them. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in the blue. It looks absolutely no different. Hmm. I think it'll be safest to start with the lightest color first, which is lavender. And basically you just start going for it. Ah! God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Just any kind of pattern you want, I believe. Oh, it's cool. I'm leaving room for the other dyes because I want three colors, obviously. Flip it over. Let's do the blue next. I'm gonna get all the areas that I haven't got. I don't think this is gonna be pastel. This blue is too bright for that, but it's still a cool color. So some people have literally just like inj injected it like this. I'm worried this is too blue. But I think for this purple one is the one I'm gonna make sure gets like really in there. Hopefully it's worked. I tried to get into all the crevices. There might be some random points that are really white, which would be annoying. And I'm also worried that these colors are mixing to be an ugly combination. But now we put them in plastic bags and we wait. So different YouTube videos and different websites say to leave the clothes in the bags for different amounts of time, anywhere from an hour to 24 hours. I think the longer you leave it in, the deeper the color. I don't really need it any deeper than it is, so I might only leave it in a few hours. But let's do the crop top. So now we're gonna try the swirl technique. And I think I'm just gonna use two colors for this because the blue is so dark. Apparently you grab the middle and then you just twist it like so until the whole thing starts to turn. And then you put three bands on it. This is a very small item I'm doing this on. Most people have got it on like big t-shirts and stuff. So that's kind of what it's supposed to look like. Just three elastic bands spread out evenly. So to create the swirl, you're supposed to put... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. It not, hmm. okay, I think I've still done that wrong. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. And then I'll go over the bits I want in the darker color. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is do alternate triangles. But it's hard to be specific here. Why is there only five? Shouldn't there be six? Where's the other? Oh, no, it moved. Oh God, I'm just gonna make this up. This is not gonna be right. <laughs> oh no. Also, you're supposed to... Yeah, this is not correct. Okay. And it's going everywhere. Really screwed this up. Sorry, everyone. Well, it's all bleeding, so... I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know what... Okay, this is just an experiment. Well, it's going in this little bag. So now all three things are in bags, and I guess we just wait. Tick tock, tick tock. So what you're supposed to do is rinse it with cold water. You can take these off either before or after. Let's see if all the color comes out. Okay, it's getting a little lighter, which is not a bad thing. I might just take these off. Oh, there's a lot of white right there. Oh no! And this is right at the front! <laughs> it doesn't look too bad. I'm not super into this massive white patch. All right, onto the hoodie. This one I'm definitely worried about because it's a slightly different fabric from the other one and I'm scared that it's gonna come out more. Ooh. This isn't even gonna be the last time I wash it. I'm putting it in the washing machine after this. Pretty cool. Oh, it's so small it falls down the plug. The grand reveal. Oh, 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 bleh. That is kind of a spiral, you can kind of see that. So once the water runs clear on all your items, you're gonna throw them in the washing machine. We're gonna do it on cold and not for very long. Go! Ooh, it's still colored. It's not as crazy bright as it was, which I like. 
This is actually perfect. And my little baby one still has color on it. Okay, now we're gonna dry and then we're finished. See you soon. Here is the finished product. Oh my God, I love it. I can't believe how well this actually turned out. And even the top, which doesn't entirely match, it still matches enough that it doesn't look crazy together. It's so cute. It's definitely lighter than it was, but that's exactly what I wanted. I am really surprised how well the top and bottom match when they weren't exactly the same fabric. I now just want to go and try out a bunch of different patterns and colors. I might just go do that. Bye-bye.